I remember a time before the Cascade dried up. Here in Verticello, the four nations of plant and bug people flourished and thrived. But the great waterfall that fed the land slowed to a trickle, revealing a vast salt sea and unknown islands. The only guide were the words of the 13 dried carvings. The water will slow to fall, but the tides are turning. Find the infinite lake to replenish the world and discover the salmon who will grant you a wish of whatever you desire. This marks the beginning of the tide, as many green folk hauled on the ships to find the infinite lake and maybe riches, adventure, excitement, and purpose along the way. And what exactly is a salmon? Is that a berry? That was 50 years ago, and the tide rushes forward ever still. There are many stories caught on the wind between sails, but why don't we hear just one? Of a butterfly gunman with clipped wings, a ripened and explosive piece of produce, and a witch made out of tea. This is Join the Party Campaign 3, The Rising Tide. I'll sing you a song that all green folk know. Until, until the water falls home. That only began 50 years ago. Until, until the water falls home. We seek the deep lake and a wish granting salmon. Until, until the water On the beach of the hold, a pirate with a braided beard and a dirty and sweat-stained bandana is standing on the beach, holding a cup of coffee and sipping it, looking for the little bubbles that come up from where the big creeb, who sleeps at the bottom of the reef, every so often, the, maybe the big creeb does a yawn and it comes up like a big bubble and goes bloop. So Aww. it's a good place to stand. Oh. As uh, they're standing there, sipping their, their bean juice, a sound starts to come closer. It's faint. You can't make it out. It could be anything. It could be uh, the yaw of some of some flock skulls. So, of sun goals. Oh. I already came up with this one. Maybe it's the... Uh, <laughs> it could be another species. That's okay. Well, Julia, all sun goals, it's not actually one type of bird. Mm. It's the general idea of them who right, live like their the goals. the genus of it. It's the genus. Yeah. It's like I'm not, it's not the species of this plant bird. It's, some, it's something else. It's the gotcha. kingdom of goals. Yeah. <laughs> you, maybe it's... Is it the squawk of sun goals feasting on some bread that accidentally got dropped in the sea? Is it a wayward battle happening in the morning light? No, it's the unmistakable sound of a coxswain demanding strokes from their paddling crew. At the front of the crumpled sea whip where the whole nose of the ship is gone, perched on top is three different small mounds of algae screaming, Stroke! 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 <laughs> <laughs> and the crew of the Sea Whip are longshore paddling the two out of three damage husk of their once proud pirate ship, which looked like crap before. But <laughs> I was going to say, excuse me, not a lot's different here. <laughs> Except that there's a, the sail is totally ripped and the front is sheared clean off to the shore of the hold. Stroke! 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 <laughs> Umbi, I know you have old man strength. Don't dog it now. We're close. I think I'm dying. Oh, my God. You always say that. <laughs> Troy, come on. Troy. You're great at motivating, man. I've never felt better. <laughs> Cammy, you're sweating right through your hat. I just wanted you to know that. You're still doing a great job. Talk to my duplicate. She's the one who's paddling. <laughs> <laughs> Cammy's in the corner taking a sip of tea. 
We are back at another. This is skill tree two. Two skill, two tree. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> We have managed to do another downtime episode here at the wonderful hold. We have a lot to deal with here, but first, I would love the pl- a chance for the players to come to our new branded segment by Mage Hand Press called "Leveling Up: Colon Showing Off More Thing from Vault of Spire of Secrets." Colon, the players have joined the party. Level up from level three to level five. Can we get? Mike on the phone, maybe like uh, Mage Hand Mike, maybe just like workshop that a little bit. It's like a little, little long. Maybe. No, he or, he chunky. confirmed it. He said it was good. He liked it. Yeah, okay, he great. Said it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah. we we get paid by the second, not by the <laughs> not by the, the copy. Right, like Charles Dickens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter what the words are, as long as the words are there. I also thought that you said uh, a branded <laughs> section, like a Brandon section, and I was like, Brandon gets his own section in this. I one? know. That's yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm into I did it. for a second too, and I panicked, and I was like, you're like, oh, oh what do I have to do? <laughs> well, Brandon, you. You do need to use the uh, MIDI version of some sort of like sports sports radio thing. That's gonna be the the that's gonna be the music bed for this entire section. It, yeah, nice. it's the ESPN song, but it's on a pan flute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love exactly that. Right. Here's the thing, though: the pan flute is is hooked up to a MIDI keyboard, which is hooked up to your computer. Mm-hmm. There you yeah, go. exactly. Just to Make really get that crunch that we're looking for in uh, <laughs> postmodern pan flute. Yeah, mm-hmm. a whole three bits. God, <laughs> that's a good number of bits. bits. It's a good bit. Listen, I went to an Anamanaguchi concert, and he only used one and a half for a three-hour Whoa! set. I don't know what the fuck that is, but I love it. <laughs> the people uh, who know that it is, uh, it's good. It's good. It's a good <laughs> reference. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dogs, let's uh, let's level let's level up. We're going from level three to level five. Whee! Whee! Why don't we tell the fine folks at home what we're doing? Let's go from least complex to most complex. So let's go, uh, Troy Cami Umbi. Yeah. I would like it if you called us Hey Salty Sea Dogs. Okay. Hey Salty Sea Dogs. Hey Salty Sea Dogs. Do you want to level up? Yes. <laughs> yes <please. laughs> Resident Vembo here. Hi, it's Troy Riptide. <laughs> I get an ability score improvement, and I'm pleased to report everybody that because Troy has now read one, count them one book, uh, my wisdom is no longer negative one, it's zero. Oh, Yay. hell yeah. Well, it's all those titles of books that Troy also read. Exactly yeah. right. So it yeah. really helps. Yeah. And as soon as I read more titles of books, I might get a plus one to wisdom. It would be uh, <laughs> wonderful for me. You're proving the educational system of the United States, correct? It's like, read books and you'll learn more. Now yeah. your perception's better. That's true. <laughs> I am much beefier in HP. I'm up to 40 hit points, which is Ooh. great. And I also get two attacks per turn oh, as my gunslinger nice. uh, level five improvement. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah, That's dog. sick. That's me. Hell yeah. Hey, magic user. Hey. What you got? Hey, well, I... magic user. <laughs> I hey, got magic dirt. user. <laughs> hey, but make a major on the radio. Stereo, that T which you know. Yep. <laughs> Just thinking about what the transcript's gonna look like for, for, for that. Your right. Bye <laughs> bye, <laughs> Miss <a> Magic User. <laughs> Just for the trans- transcript, don't even use it. Just insert, Eric tried his best to do a parody of Hey Soul Sister Great. while inserting the word magic user. Tried? Thank you. Succeeded. Hey, I know we're all trying to empower me here, but like, I tried. I don't know if I You succeeded in trying, which is what Troy heard is how you read. That's yeah. what Yoda used to say. Yeah. You yeah. succeeded in trying. Do or do not. You, it was pretty good content. <laughs> So as a magic user, I got some third level spells now, which I'm very excited about. I'm going to keep them in my back pocket for later Ooh, so I can do fine. shenanigans. Ooh, uh, let's go. I also gained a new hex, which I'm also going to keep in my back pocket so I can do shenanigans later. Ooh. And then finally, I got a new feature for the witch class, which is called Insidious Spell. When you cast a witch spell that affects a creature that is under the effect of your hex, that creature has disadvantage on its first saving throw against the spell. This feature only applies to a hostile creature, which is the sole target of your hex. Fuck yeah. That's really cool. Hell which yeah. Which is dope. Uh, so basically, everyone's going to be weak once I hex them. Fuck yeah. That's cool, especially just the mixing and matching you can do here, because like not all hexes, all hexes are like debuffs, but they all do something different. So I like the mm-hmm. idea of like pairing hexes with spells that they are even more likely to fail, which is very, very cool. Yes. But it has to be singular target hex, singular target spell. 
Like yes. it, it doesn't count for AOE stuff. Interesting, interesting. I also gained some HP. I am buffer now, and I've got 37 hit points, which wow. is pretty nice. good for a, a little tea witch. Mm-hmm. For a magic user, yeah. And I, one, talked to Eric off mic to scooch some of my ability score stuff around and increased my charisma by one. So now I have nice, chunky bonuses to both my wisdom and charisma. Nice. Hell yeah. Did everyone get their proficiency bonus up two to three? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. The thing that happens for all characters going from three to five is we're leveling up two levels worth of HP. Everyone's proficiency bonus goes from two to three, and every single one of y'all get an ASI bonus because that's what happens to PCs at level four. Anglish as a second improvement. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So let's talk about the alchemist really quickly because I think it's important to know that... Is this an intervention? Yes. yes. <laughs> Stop throwing bombs at things. <laughs> no, Brandon, keep throwing bombs at things. But here's the, the wonderful thing about the alchemist is, and I'm putting doing some commentary on behalf of our good friend Mage Hand Mike over at uh, Mage Hand Press, is like the alchemist is an improved version of the artificer. I think the artificer is incredibly complicated and overly, overly annoying, but it, there's a lot of choice in the alchemist because of that. We are unlocking, now that we're going from three to five, we are unlocking so many choices that Brandon has here that is going to make Umby the most bomber man he can. But that's like the vibe, but there are so many different things that happen that can happen to the alchemist that we're starting to unleash here. That is a good summary. Thank you, Mage Hand Mike's uh, mouth. Folks mouse. Brandon, excuse you. Spokes mouth. Spokes yeah, mouth. There's, so there's a little mouse on Mage Hand Mike's shoulder yes. who's saying it's all this. It's got Eric's voice. But yes. also it's Mage Hand Mike using his spokes mouth to make oh. <laughs> to speak. I see uh, via about, the spokes mouse. Yeah. Got it. It's, it's PR. Hi, I'm Tiny Mouse Eric. <laughs> all right, so all the characters get, get an ASI bonus. <laughs> It's weird. It looks like the dad from An American Tale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all canonically Jewish. That was yeah. not even me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does anybody want some iced coffee? I'm going out for some. Adorable. Um, see, that's the thing that Eric likes is iced coffee. That's true. <laughs> Can confirm. Really Seen him drink it. Yeah. And he said, wow, that's good. I like this. <laughs> this is going so great. <laughs> okay, so for Umbi, I got a couple of things that I'm going to go ahead and say, y'all. I know this is going to shock you. I'm kind of a bit, little bit leaning into support here a little bit. What? What? I know. What? I know. I can still do a good chunk of damage, don't get me wrong. But uh, let's go one by one. So at fourth level, I got the ability score improvement, which I changed uh, my con and my intelligence. My intelligence is my modifier, so that everything went up. And then I got more HP with a con, which is great. And then I got something called discovery. Ooh, all right. Yes, discoveries are like, for those of you who've played before, they're kind of like warlock boons, how it's just like an interesting way to level up your character directly with like an extra kind of like ability. There's no other better, better way to say it. Cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So the first ability, sort of discovery ability thing I get. Um, Amanda, I'm going to need you to hold on to your chair. Okay, I'm holding. This is called Explosive Missile. Whoa! As a bonus action, you can load one of your bombs onto the head of a crossbow bolt. <gasps> Instead of its normal damage, this bolt deals damage as if the bomb has been primed and thrown, but it doesn't have a blast radius. Only one of your bombs can be loaded on the bolt at a time, and you can't fire an explosive bolt at the same turn you throw a bomb. That's me! You now have bomb arrows. <gasps> Yay! Yes. Yes. So we discussed this a little bit, but it turns out it was right goddamn in the fucking book. Yep. It's almost like Mage Head Mike made both of these classes and foresaw that maybe they could pair up. Hell yeah, dog. Yeah. And the best thing is that it's a bonus action. So I can load up your arrow and then on my turn throw a bomb as well. Yeah, here here's the interesting about uh, thing about this is that like if Brandon wanted to put or if Umbi had a crossbow, he couldn't shoot and throw at the same time. However, oh. nothing in the rules say that you can't load up someone else's crossbow bolt and then toss your own bomb. Yeah. And we're we're going to figure out the action economy of like priming bombs and stuff like that. I'll have to figure well, that out. I figured this out because I was reading it and I was like, shit, have I supposed to have been priming bombs on one term and then throwing on the second one? No. Oh, right. So according to priming, the priming rules, it is the use an object action, which is an action, 
But in the rules itself, it says you can use that action and attack right. at the same time. Right. It's not an attack. The It's a special action called priming bombs that let you throw at the same time. So that's yes. perfect. The only yes. thing I'm going to say is that uh, you guys are going to have to, like, stand next to each other to make yeah. it happen. Sure. But other than that, that's totally fine. I'd only be able to prime Troy's bomb arrow and then throw a normal bomb. I wouldn't be able to make a second special bomb. Got it. Okay, yeah, that's yes. the thing I was thinking about. All right, that's fine. But also, the normal bomb's good, and your damage oh, goes up for that. Yeah, They're chunk. Tell me more about the radius. Does that mean that it only it only impacts the target? Yes, correct. Yeah, it doesn't okay, blow good. up. It just hits the person. Hell yeah. Yeah, so something nice. that I don't think we've been doing correctly, actually, is that if I decide to have a bomb radius, which I can decide not to... But when I do, the target has to make a bomb save DC, which for me is 14 now. But the right. radius, people in the radius make a DC 11 check. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. But sure. I don't think that makes any huge difference. No, I don't think so. In my previous levels, it was only a 12 anyway, my bomb DC. So it was one point different. So it's fine. Oh, That's wonderful. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Now, the second discovery I get, which is tight, there's a lot of cool ones. So, And I can switch one out every time I, I gain a level, which is fun. Mm. But I decided to use what they call poisoner. Mm -hmm. So your research into poisonous compounds has taught you how to concoct lethal toxins. You gain proficiency with the poisoner's kit. Additionally, you can craft the following poisons when you brew potions and you use your bomb save DC instead of the normal save DCs, which is higher, which is tight. So the important thing here for me is that so there's like antitoxin, basic poison. Boring. Healing? Who needs that? Healing? Who needs? That's a different one. It's not a poison. That's ah. not a um, poison. That's fair. Usually healing is not poison. That's yes. True. But I've got a couple of really cool ones. So one is called Oil of Taggart, which basically they become poisoned and then become unconscious for 24 hours. Ooh. Oh. Super useful, which wow. is a contact yes. potion. And then importantly, I've also got Truth Serum, which is basically a zone of truth spell, mm -hmm. uh, wow. which is cool. And then finally, the most important one here, well, I have two options here, but one I like the best is Serpent Venom, which means that if they're subjected to this poison, they must succeed on a bomb saving throw. If they fail, they take 3d6 poison damage and half as much on a success. But the important thing is that this is an injury potion, meaning that it can be applied to weapons, ammunition, and other objects. Ooh. And it remains potent until delivered through a wound or washed off. So, Ooh. Troy, you now have poison arrows. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Love it. Jesus Christ. That's you, amazing. Let's see how this do. This is also better because if you make Serpent Venom, uh, they're going to be like, oh, well, this is obviously from a nightshade snake. So Ooh. it's definitely not from an alchemist, I know, which also is pretty cool. That's I love true. that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, you're now Link and I am your Zelda. <laughs> Congrats. I don't get that reference, but I'm loving being the arrow shooter to your arrow maker more deadlier. <laughs> yeah. Ha. Yeah. Ha. Yeah. So yeah. I'll let you know when I make all these potions and stuff. But yeah, you'll be able to add 3d6 poison damage on an arrow hit or now 2d10 bomb damage on your bomb hit, which is Dang. big. That's also going to be really interesting because that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the arrows bouncing off of stuff. Like, the damage of being hit by the arrow gets reduced by half, but the poison is still... Poison. There's still poison, still poison. That's true. Yeah. So that's tight as hell. Um, I also changed my laughing gas bomb. So I have bomb formulae, and every time I take a level, I can change one. So I changed the laughing gas to an oil bomb, which is a D6 fire. But what it does is you throw it and basically cover the targets or target in flammable oil. And the next time that creature takes fire damage, it takes an extra D6 fire damage for each die of fire damage rolled up to a maximum half my alchemist level rounded up. So maximum of three. Dang. So it can be removed by a gallon of water. Sure. But I also forgot that my regular ass bomb is fire damage. Yeah. <laughs> Wee! So it's possible that I could throw this oil bomb and then throw a regular bomb with like three reagent dice if I wanted to, and it would take 2d10 plus two damage plus 3d6 damage. Holy shit. And if it's a construct, you multiply that by two, right? 
Yep. Mm-hmm. So I could blow the fuck out of a ship. Mm-hmm. So Brandon discovered wow. how to do fireball. Great. <laughs> now, also the cool thing is if Julia or Troy has any fire damage moves, they can also take advantage of that. So, Well, Brandon, I did take as a cantrip produce flame. So. Ooh. Always yeah. a good one. Always a good one. And then I also took a new bomb formula, or a bomb formula, I guess this is singular, called Quiet Bomb, which is a D8 fire, so also works with oil. When this bomb detonates, it only makes a low thud audible out to 10 feet, which normally it's audible out to a mile, <laughs> and a puff of smoke to mask the light given off by its blast. And creatures Helpful. have disadvantage on ability checks to detect that this bomb was detonated nearby. That's tight as so, hell. So a sneak bomb, which is fun. Yeah. It's pretty cool. That sounds like a real, my players are unruly comment is like, hey, can I just, can I do a bomb, but like real quiet? <laughs> and DM's like, no. <laughs> no, that's not how bombs work. Well, that's how no, this bomb works, can't. bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Finally, I get a really fun... There's still more. There's still yeah, more. I, yeah. I get a lot of wow. shit, Julia. Wow. And then finally, I get a, a really cool small thing that's called a flashbang, uh, which is a flashbang. But as a bonus action, I can throw one at my feet, disorienting and distracting nearby foes. Each large or smaller creature within five feet can't take reactions until the smart of my next turn. So I can disengage basically for free. Oh, nice. Yeah. Which is great. And it's useful if I... Because I should be arranged bomber i think is the idea so yeah that is my thought hell yeah yes to sum up all the things that happen to umby here alongside all the things that regular pcs have you get one more formula and you get to swap them out your reagent dice go up you get two discoveries and you get a flashbang so all that Mm -hmm. stuff is happening all at the same time the jump from three to five for alchemist is pretty pretty wild yeah i honestly felt a little bit like i was kind of useless uh, no. At level three, <laughs> you were no like you straight up. I know that sounded sarcastic, but it wasn't true. You must have read like ten books overnight, man. <laughs> <laughs> but now at five, yeah, it's it's really coming into its own. So hell yeah, dog! I can do some massive damage. Yeah, my bomb when I primed them, they went up to two d ten as opposed to one d ten, which is big, sick. So yeah. I'm excited. Woo. Yeah, you would have blown up that ceiling twice as fast. (laughs) (laughs) All right, folks. Well, that segment's done. I'm sure you, uh, thanks for playing that song the entire way through. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it seems like we have some stuff to do over at the old skill tree. We, Wahoo. All right, folks. So we got one XP that you all get for completing the book depository arc. And I think we're ending up with three pieces of amber here. Yay. So you have to use the XP even if you turn it into amber, but you have a lot of stuff to deal with. Once again, the uh, for those of you listening along at home, we're going to put the skill tree image into the episode description. So hopefully if your podcast app can support images, you can check that out there. Or you can always go to jointhepartypod.com slash verda-stello, which is also in the link in the episode description every single episode. You can follow along, but we're going to have a specific updated one that we're going into, which has um, Dr. Doctor filled in. So uh, we have a lot of stuff here. I mean, almost everything is still on the board other than Dr. Doctor. You can always decide to give Havana a class level up to figure out what kind of doctor he is. Eric, pirate doctor, please. (laughs) He is already a pirate doctor, but he can be a straight up medical doctor, a naturalist, something a little crunchy, a black hat, sort of like messing around on the fringes of society doctor, or he can become religious. Uh, And of course, we have all the various (laughs) things here. You can dig and try to find some treasure. You can invest in the you can invest in the Magnolia Network. uh, If I try to get some, came out of me. No, there are plenty of ways to dig. Uh, You can invest in the Magnolia Network, which is every time, (laughs) every time, which is where a husband and wife uh, Magnolia Flower Team starts to do some interior and exterior decorating on the hold. Uh, You can start to drop the hammer and become the lords of the manor here on the hold. Uh, You can invest in monster wrangling, of course. Uh, You can invest in the putts and pirate, (laughs) putts and puppets pirate palladium. Uh, and get the pirate, the uh, putt putt golf and pirate, uh, the putt putt golf and puppet show. Yeah, <laughs> get that up and running. Um, you can invest in the ship uh, by making a ship shape, or you can unlock some backstories of NPCs we met here on the hold. 
And as always, you can give Arello some Amber to try to get some stuff done, but that doesn't need to be happen specifically at this time. Uh, like, it's not part of the skill tree thing, but you can do that in general. Anytime. Eric, I have a small confession. Yeah. Uh, when we started talking about the skill tree again for the first time, my first thought was, do you think this skill tree has a wife? And <laughs> yes, but she left a long, long time ago, and they haven't seen the women ever since. <laughs> Yeah, Julia's correct. Yes. It's a fantasy story. So we have to steal one thing from Tolkien. Yeah. So and, and the skill tree is an ant. Canonically, it has a beard. Its name <laughs> Its name is Skill Root. Ooh, I like it. You can look at you can talk to it like the great Deku tree. Yeah, fuck yeah. All right. So here is my suggestion. We have one XP already in the can. We have three amber. Mm -hmm. Why don't we convert two amber into XP, keep one in the bank, and then we each get to pick something from the skill tree? Ooh, that's a great idea. Do we have any things to use amber for? Like, do we need like a hint or a clue? Um, I think we're, we're like on the trail right now with the... The drought stone? Yes, with the drought stone and what we found out from going into the newspaper. Mm -hmm. So so you think we're good? I think we're good at the moment. But if we need to use that one, we can always use it with Arello. Yes. True. Obviously, we do need to not fix our ship because we still want it to look bad. But you know what I mean. That's yeah. a good point. We are, this, is, this is downtime. Each of you get one like downtime action. One of you is going to have to give up that action to fix the ship. If you fix it by yourself, you're not a professional, so it's up to you. If we get the ship right, does that negate that? I think you'd still have to use the action, but you you would have professional help, and that person would join your crew if you so choose. That's cool. true. I'm happy to to do that. When you think about it, ships are just kind of like a barrel um, that you can go in, so I'm happy to uh, to be the repair person here. Hey, what up? Uh, Amanda slash uh, Troy. That's super true, actually. That is super true. <laughs> yep. Never thought about it that way. Yep. I did learn um, I did learn that the part of the barrel, what's the biggest, is called the equator uh, or the bilge, <laughs> which sounds it sounds just like a, th a thing like, hey, yeah, I'll see you on the bilge, man. Or like, hey, Harold, you're looking really good on your bilge. And then Harold will be like, mm, you got to buy me dinner first or whatever. No, uh, Har <laughs> Harold's saying, don't talk about my bilge until you're ready to see my bunghole. That's what Harold says. Oh. Yeah. And then, um, the bunghole is the hole in the cork in, yes. in the thing when the cork goes. Yes, Har yes. Harold knows lots of things. <laughs> yep. So. Are you both reading the Barrel book? Is that what's happening? <laughs> like that the real episode. life Barrel Cammie, book? Cammy, I had a rich life before you all came along. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was Julia asking Amanda and Eric if you're both really reading the Barrel book that Amanda got from the library. Julia, I already know about bungholes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's just what Eric sounds like. All right. All right, Amanda, if you feel confident doing the, the ship shape, I wanted to give you the opportunity to do Monster Wrangler because I know in your heart of hearts you want that, but we can also save it for next time. So. I mean, we can still do it. We can decide on what we want to do all three. We don't have to make individual decisions if we don't want to, but yeah. yeah. Right. I think it's a good idea to keep one amber in the bank. I don't think we necessarily need yeah. more than that. So, Whoa. Uh, thank you. It is the color of our energy, and our energy right now is limping into the hold. Um, yes. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that, but I'm happy to use Troy's action on the repair. Gotcha. Cool. I think you got it. I mean, think about the Thimbo, like, glistening muscles uh, with the sea, salty sea spraying on you. You got mm -hmm. to. Yeah. You got it. Exactly right. And as we, of course, do row back home onto the beach um, of the hold and stop rowing, Troy is just, like, pumped up. And so he starts, like, pumping a barrel over his head uh, just, <laughs> just for fun because he's, like, he's jacked. He loves it. <laughs> cool. So it's, like, so hot, but, like. I, Troy, I would never think of you that way, but it is extremely attractive when you do that. <laughs> Thanks, Cammy. Cool. Okay, so are you going to use one thing on ship shape, getting a ship right? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna put. I'm gonna put that in my pocket. We're gonna deal with that once Troy starts fixing the ship. So that's one. We'll play that scene out in a moment. Great, Brandon. I know what you want to do. Well, I know what I want to do, but that's not really like. Pressure. Brandon, you should. Do Brandon, it. we're doing one practical. You got to treat yourself. We need. To do it. Well, let me let me. Brandon, think. I let stole a bunch of amber so that you could dig. <laughs> this is what I was thinking of when I did that. Uh, thank you for for thinking of me, Julia. That's very kind. Thank you. Yeah, the things that I think that would be fun slash good to do would be Monster Wrangler, 
backstory or doctor doctor, right? Yes. But you want to dig, Brandon. But I do want to dig. So there are six different times you can use dig. So if you want to knock one out, do it. You have still have five more chances to do it. Right. And the and it stays. I don't replenish this table. Okay. So if you want to knock one out, you should. Brandon, you should do it. What does a diglet sound like, Eric? Diglet dig, diglet dig, trio, 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 trio. trio. <laughs> yeah, use Julia's. Use Julia's. Wow, Julia Spokes Mouse has laryngitis. <laughs> I'm going to use all three of them at once. Great. Um, Love it. I was going to then do, uh, to, in order to say that I was going to do that, I was going to do the diglet sounds, but mm-hmm. y'all did it so perfectly. So. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to do dig. I'm going to dig and roll, baby. All right. Yay! Let's do it right now. Let's see what happens. Go, Brandon. Go, Brandon. Go, Brandon. Go. No way, me. 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 Four. Can we describe the scene? Yeah, please. But what oh, is please. what is this what does this look like? Yeah, where are you digging, Umbi? <laughs> Umbi shows up in this fucked up ship and is like, you know what I'm gonna do? <laughs> I'm gonna go dig. <laughs> well, yeah, like I think we come to the hold as like a crew and Umbi is dying. And uh, so as I think as soon as he gets close enough to the dock, he drops his oar, like throws it on the ground and jumps off the ship without saying a word. <laughs> Sure. And then you just see him go over to like an unexplored region of the cavern and pull out from his jacket like one of those collapsible shovels and just start digging. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Umbi goes, I'm so tired from rowing. Let me do physical labor by digging. Exactly. Nothing. This is like a child getting out of a car in a road trip yes. and complaining the entire time. And they're just, they run and pick up their uh, Super Nintendo immediately. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And yeah. he's just mumbling to himself the entire time. Okay. What is he saying? He's like, just fucking stupid cock Harold and just fucking fucking fuck. <laughs> All right, you start digging, throwing uh sand and silt over your shoulder, and eventually you you hear a ding <gasps> as your shovel hits something metallic. Yeah! <laughs> You start digging, you keep digging, keep digging, and you see a full treasure chest. Ooh. Classic treasure chest. Brown with like black with like uh metallic like brass fastenings, like, uh, I guess is the word. Yeah, yeah what do you yeah. call this? Yeah, fa- well, let's say adornments. Say Guys on a barrel, it's called a stave, but uh, <laughs> I don't know about chests. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. See, Amanda's joke was too good. Now we have to keep in me yep. not knowing how to describe I know. a chest. Yeah. <laughs> Amanda, how long is that book that you're reading? 841 pages on my e reader. <laughs> what? Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> Uh, Eric, you can say, like, rivets or hoops. Okay, okay great, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. Cl- Listen, classic chest, b- like, brass rivets, big lock on it. You pull it out. Uh, you see Umbi sort of, like, again, like, block people out from view, like, basketball style. So he's like, this is my chest. No one fucking touch it. <laughs> yes, it does have a lock on it. Um, hmm. Well, obviously, I don't have a key. So can I take the shovel? Oh, what am I thinking? Can I just throw a bomb at it? Yeah, God absolutely. Damn it, Brandon. Absolutely. I like that it's still in the hole, and then you see like the sand go up like a guy. I'm gonna, okay, Eric. Here's what I'm gonna do. This is the yeah. smart thing, Julia, because I've learned. Thank you, Brandon. I am going to cover the chest up in the soil or in the, sure. in the dirt and yeah. the sand, and then just have the lockout. Now we're cooking mm. with gas. Now okay. we're cooking with bombs, okay, Brandon. Okay, Hell yeah. Brandon. Cooking with bombs is the thing we could do, Julia. That's good. Listen, we could talk to that restaurant guy. Yeah. Wasn't that Emerald's first TV show? <laughs> Cooking with bombs, yeah. Yeah, Cajun style. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> of course, you as you dig it up, it's a little smoky now, but the lock has fallen off, and uh, the chest is ready to be opened. Slowly, as if he's savoring every possible second, he's going to slowly creak open the top of this treasure chest, shaking with anticipation. Da, 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 da. You open it, and there's a note at the bottom. <gasps> and it's empty otherwise? <laughs> it is empty otherwise. Fuck! With a note at the bottom that says, You've been pranked by God Fun Mandy Potash! <laughs> hey, it's Fun Mandy Potash! Who the fuck is Fun Mandy Potash? Are you here right now? <laughs> I yell out to the hold. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, you mean like legendary prankster and second mate to... To, uh, to Captain Crimson, Fun Mandy Potash? 
Are they still alive? Are they here right now? No, they're no, they're not here. I want you to know this is like you said, is Gandhi here? Yeah, he I just know. passed me. <laughs> Gandhi famously uh, full of pranks. Full of pranks. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing, Eric. I still have a nice chest. <laughs> you do. You do. Brandon, I want you to know, and I want everyone else to know, I wrote nothing once on this table. And of course you rolled it. God. Because that's of course you Brandon it. Luck. Damn Listen, it. every single roll after this is going to be something, baby. Might that's be true. bad. Might be good. But it's going to be true. something. I True. promise you, I swear upon this show and that we've been doing for half a decade, I wrote nothing once. Unfortunately, it was a four. I get it. Brandon, but I think we could still use this. What do you think? We also have a note from someone we know was one of the closest people to see the wish granting salmon. I yep. have a journal too. And we have the journal. I bet we can read that note with some special glasses. Oh. That's what I'm thinking. Because first of all, what was fun Mandy Potash doing in the hold? Good to know. And secondly, maybe we can see where she was going on her next voyage. And maybe that'll be an indication as to where they were headed for the Infinite Lake. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I was picturing Mandy Patinkin, but as like a rutabaga. <laughs> We'll see. Oh, yeah. I don't know the gender of Fun yeah. Mandy Potash. I got a, a lady vibe, but I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. We could even steal something and then leave the note behind. Yeah. Mm, that's fun. That's fun. Yeah. You do have a, a beautiful looking chest and a uh, and a note. So a you, little you do have singed. That. Yes. A little singed. A little singed. Little singed. Bobby's going to fold the note up just like perfectly, carefully put it in his jacket, and then lovingly put some bombs in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> and then rebury it? Rebury it. Oh, my God. No, not rebury it. It's, oh, okay. it's now my inventory. Oh, <laughs> oh cute. Incredible. I'm All picturing, right. like, a bassinet with, like, a blanket folded <laughs> at the bottom. You see him walk towards <laughs> back towards the ship, just, like, cradling the chest, yeah. just, like, rocking it back and forth. Um, what a wonderful chest. Where did you get that? It's mine. <laughs> okay. I was just asking a question about it. Sorry, I'm just, I, Harold got me worked up. Oh, okay. Fully guilelessly, Troy goes, it's really amazing how the minute you get home, you have enough energy what to go digging. That's awesome. <laughs> Incredible. All right, Gulia, what are we doing with this last one? Doctor, doctor, give, give me, me the, the news. news. I got a bad case of turning you into a real doctor. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> in my head, Havana is like, Havana has his face like in a bowl of chili. <laughs> <laughs> and he's looking at us and like, what? Do you, you said my name? Havana, I wanted to help set up your medical office here in the hold. Oh, that's th thanks. I like that. Because I know that you lost most of your belongings when you arrived here because you didn't know the first lesson of being around pirates. But I figured, you know, with some of the spare wood that we have from our ship, which is now <laughs> trashed. Troy throws a couple two buys over. There we go. Thank you, Troy. And maybe we can set up something for you and get you like to be your. Or, I know you're already a pirate doctor, but we can make you a real doctor. What are you going to do? Change his gender? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kevin puts a hand on his shoulder and says, don't listen to Umby. He's just being biased. <laughs> He's just being a misandrist. <laughs> you know, I I still got to get used to Umby's traditional views. On yeah. <laughs> it's very conservative for some reason. I yeah, know. Very yeah. conservative. Very socially conservative. Fiscally irresponsible. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> It's a joke for Amanda's out there. It's <laughs> a good one. Joking. Hey, Eric. Eric. Joking. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Okay. What subclass do you want to level up Havana? Oh, I get to pick it. Interesting. Yes. So once again, we're reviewing medical. So he'd be a straight up doctor. It's definitely, it's the most vanilla, but also it does make him a little bit more, um, I guess, vanilla. To, to say in so many ways. He can be naturalist, is he'll be kind of crunchy, like using some, figuring some of that stuff out. Uh, religious is that he finds God <laughs> and he'll become, uh, have some cleric bent to it. Or he can be practicing the dark arts using uh, some real uh, messed up doctor shit. So I think because Cammy is the one who is using 
her time to level this up. I think I'm leaning towards naturalist or religious, but I want to hear the opinion of, of y'all before I make any decisions. Awesome. I have no strong opinion, but my mm-hmm. thought is that if we run into Audrey, the Ron Queen, and her crew is like all undead, then like the Black Hat Dark Arts one might be useful. Or I would argue the opposite, which is the religious one would be useful because oh, divine magic is going to do more to necromancy. Yeah. And if he is religious, uh, Havana, then he's definitely going to become besties with Umbi and they're going to take him under his wing. <laughs> Maybe if he stopped being so judgmental about his gender. <laughs> Uh, Amanda, do you have a strong opinion about which route to take? You know, Julia, I think the funniest one would be either religious or black hat. Because (laughs) if Havana is like here on the sea and sees death for the first time and he's just like, oh, oh, man. And either falls like really into the idea of, you know, the planter or, you know, like the god of the open seas or maybe super nihilist, which is kind of a religion when you think about it, or black hat. And is just like, yep, nothing matters. Everything's undead on the sea. Deep sea creatures are wild. I don't know what's happening out here. Either one of those directions. Okay. I do love those ideas because on one, he becomes an emo kid and the other, he becomes like the preacher's wife. <laughs> so straight edge. So yep. incredible. <laughs> so fucking straight edge. Yep. Okay. Here's my pitch to you. Here's the scene that I want to lay out before we, we make this decision. I think Cammy, as she suggested already, is going to try to take him into a little cave to set up his quote unquote doctor's practice, right? Sure. Right. I like the idea this is like uh, Lucy's psychology shack from yes. Peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's, it's that, but like there's a seaweed bead door instead. Yeah, the doctor is in one to bloom. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Cammy's like, this is how you can make money and, and get things other than stealing them. I, I, there's so much to learn. Yes, there is so much to learn. You know, when I was raised in open fields, and then the entire time that Cammy is helping Havana set up, they are just talking about open fields religion mm. the entire time. Wow, I mean, it must be nice to, like, you know, the thing I always struggle with is that, um, you know, it doesn't feel like there is, like, I wish there was a scoreboard somewhere of everyone's, <laughs> he, has, he hits a big bong. I wish there was a scoreboard of like everyone's good deeds and bad deeds. Because, you know, I, we're all doing this and I don't, we're all just out here trying to figure it out. And like, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to be a nice person and you've all been so nice to me. And the, I, I, I try to be a good friend and a good green folk. But then, like, I think about the guys who threw me into the sea and I don't think anything bad's going to happen to them. But, like, the path is so makes sense is that if you do good things you get to be who you are and you get to be better in the next life but if you do bad things then what coming to you is coming to you right yeah Yeah. and like the best part is like kindness is the greatest thing that one can achieve right and so even if you're doing kindness and it seems like a bad thing to some people it's actually a good thing to other people says the pirate who steals things yeah (laughs) because those people don't need it but i do (laughs) Or yeah. people I love do. Yeah, and then if if things are working out, like you can be a you're like a, I don't know, a soldier for justice, making sure that people get what's coming to them or what it is. Kind of, yeah. Do you have do you have like any? I know you're you're not part of the the path anymore, but do you have any? Do you have like any any texts or a book or something or a pamphlet I could look at? I have some work by Dr. Radish Radish. Would you like some of that? <laughs> no, I meant like, does Cammy oh. have like an old, you know, like even as lapsed as you are, do you have like an old Bible that you keep under your pillow? Like I'm thinking about like in Vietnam, someone has like an old soldier's Bible yeah. that they still have. Do you have any like anything like that? Eric, Dr. Radish Radish's new King Radish. No, Bible. absolutely not. No. <laughs> uh, can I roll for that? Maybe. Just, I just want to know. What do you? What do you? What do you I, think? I'm gonna roll for it because I don't know. Okay, sure. Well, I got a five. It could also be in the like junk drawer of the hold. 
where, yeah. you know, somebody had a copy of it somewhere. Where we found the big book of barrels. Like the Book of Mormon in a motel. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Whatever you yeah. think. So I think Cammy's like, I don't, huh. But I did see a moldy pile of books over by the big clock. Maybe there was a, a copy in there. There's this cardboard sign that says, to go to the book depository. On the- <laughs> yes. It's like, oh, we were supposed to pick this up. Damn it. They're going to be so mad. <laughs> We, it was on the way. Jesus. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll st- I'll um. I'll look for that. You gave me a lot to think about, Cammy. Yeah. Just remember, everything we eat is also the same as us. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Ow! I dropped a hammer on my foot. Oh no! <laughs> Hey, it's Amanda. This time of year, it's like my mental map of my neighborhood gets overlaid with another layer of the map that includes the shady side of the block and the blocks that are the shadiest so I can keep myself a little bit cooler in the summer sun under the protection of trees. So welcome to the mid-roll. Just don't walk down Greenpoint Avenue. Just don't. No trees. It's terrible. Welcome to our newest patrons, David Stote and Jason. You have signed up for so much goodness by becoming patrons. You get party planning every other week, which, hey, guys, by the way, the One Shot Derby Bronte Party, Battle of the Brontes, aka, is happening this Friday. It's coming four days from now. You don't even know what you're about to get. Oh, my God. It's going to be incredible. And all patrons are able to hear it. We're going to have a preview, of course, posted to the main RSS feed. But you got to be a patron to hear. So go ahead. Become a patron. Be like David. Be like Stoat. Be like Jason. And hear the full-length Battle of the Brontes video or audio podcast. Yes, that's right. The video is available for all patrons because y'all helped us make this one shot derby happen. Join today. Listen to the Brontes. I promise you're going to love it. Patreon.com slash join the party pod. Or actually, um, if you've been waiting uh, just for an excuse to join the Patreon um, and the excuses that you want a mean Victorian child to tell you to do so. uh, Here we go. Don't be a dick. Join the Patreon. Patreon.com slash join the party pod. Fuck you. (laughs) This week at Multitude, have you ever wondered what life would be like on a planet different from our own or how writers create your favorite fictional worlds? Lucky for you, the absolute best communicator I know, Dr. Moya McTeer, is here to teach you all about it. Astrophysicist and folklorist Dr. McTeer explores fictional worlds by building them with a panel of expert guests, interviewing professional world builders, or reviewing the merits of worlds that have already been built. There are close to 75 episodes available of Exolore, totally for free, totally for you. If you are looking for a road trip listen, Exolore is fabulous. You should really check it out. Search for Exolore, it's like the word explore, but with an O instead of a P, in your podcast app, or go to Exolore. Pod.com. We are sponsored this week by Quest Chest from Bookworm Games. This is a fabulous maker of modules and TTRPG accessories. And right now they are running a Kickstarter for a Quest Chest. That is a system agnostic TTRPG module packed full of physical props, puzzles, narrated voiceover, music, and more. So it's both a physical and digital item, okay? So the quest chest involves a full module with several sessions worth of content. You can run the first four sessions independently or tie them together since there are narrative through lines. The physical props that this includes have like wax sealed letters, metal coins, maps, even scented candles and tea. And I really appreciate all the sensory engagement that this comes with. The chest's digital component include fully narrated voiceover, custom music, and statted out encounters for D&D, Pathfinder, and Powered by the Apocalypse. So no matter what game system you are running, you can make it work. So listen, go to bookwormgames.com, that's bookworm with a Y, B-O-O-K-W-Y-R-M, games.com, to back the project or buy the previous two quest chests along with the dice, accessories, and even D&D candy that they make. That's bookwormgames.com. 
We are also sponsored this week by 20 Sided Store. This is our friendly local game store who want us to remind you that it is a great time of year to support friendly local game stores near you, especially all of the LGBTQ plus makers whose work is highlighted in these stores. You can go ahead and buy zines and accessories and all kinds of games made by LGBTQ plus creators. I know 20 Sided Store has a fabulous pride setup. They have a table. They have all kinds of ways that you can find out about more games, accessories, and zines made by queer folks in your neighborhood and across the world. They have so many wonderful things in store. And whether you are going to the local game store near you or, hey, uh, great news, you can also just order from 20 Sided Store and they'll ship it right to you. Packed right here in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Go ahead to 20sidedstore.com. That's 20, the word, sidedstore.com. And use the code PIRATE for 20% off your order online. Or if you visit them in person, hey, it's a great idea. You should get soup dumplings at M. Shanghai next door afterward. But just mention join the party for 20% off. This show is also sponsored by BetterHelp. It is so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and not take any time to think about what you need from yourself. I have given myself the assignment of doing something two nights a week. (laughs) That uh, Last week, I went for a traditional Irish music night at a queer Irish bar that opened in my neighborhood, which is incredible. Other times, I'll like go to a different place to read. And I know that I need that time to myself, by myself, to explore the city to just be out of my own head, to read or look around or go to art or see a movie. And it's a thing I know makes me best for myself, but also to show up for the people around me. And it's just so easy to put that last on my list and do everything else for everyone else until I'm exhausted at the end of the day. But therapy is where I get reminded to do those things for myself. And when I could not access therapy near me, which wasn't available, which wasn't affordable, I couldn't find anybody in Brooklyn who was taking new patients which is crazy. There's millions of people in this borough. I was able to use BetterHelp. I just filled out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And I was even able to switch therapists for no additional charge to find somebody who really got me and who I felt I really was able to open up with. So find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash join the party today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash join the party. And finally, we're sponsored by Unthinkable, a fabulous podcast by friend of the show, Jay Akunso. The content creators we love seem to do something that no one else can do, right? They do it consistently and confidently. And when you see a post or a podcast or a video by that creator that you love, you're like, oh, my God. Only they could do this, right? It could only come from them, only come from their brain. Even if you saw it almost anonymously, you'd be like, "Mm, that really feels like Color Me Courtney or wow, that really feels like the Black Forager. Some of the creators that I love the most and whose voices are so distinct. So figuring out how you get your creative fingerprints onto your work is an incredibly important thing, especially in this age of AI and lots and lots of infinite kind of mediocre stuff out there. Since 2016, Unthinkable has inspired creators to ship more personal, powerful work. And Jay is one of the people whose opinions and voices I trust the most about being a creator online. You got to go ahead and listen to the podcast. It's absolutely fabulous and gives you a really refreshing look at the creative process through story and sound. Click on the link in our show notes for a starter pack of stories for new listeners or look up the show Unthinkable with Jay Acunzo anywhere you get your podcasts. And now. Let's get back to the show. I was thinking about earlier when Eric said that there was a piece of bread in the ocean that fell off. And I was like, that means that someone's body was ground up into flour, (laughs) made into bread, and then buried at sea. It's fucked up, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think about it. You know, that's just that's just my main thing is if I don't like think about it, I just don't think about it. Then you don't have to think about it. Smart. Smart. Incredible. You're a wise youth. Youth. All right, folks, let's do our actions here. We're going to do Troy's scene first of rebuilding the ship. But I would love to hear what uh, what else. What are the two other things you want to do? Um, Eric, Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about those spider silk sails that the Tessie the Storms crew had when they were attacking us in the, the combat. Sure. Is it possible that some of that like ripped off or something while we were in combat? Let's roll. Yeah. 
Yeah, I rolled a 19. Absolutely. I think that when you were super close, when the wa with the shape water stuff, mm -hmm. I think that maybe the maybe the sail broke off. One of the smaller masts might have broken off in the in the in the moment, and that can definitely break off because I also want to be the aubergine again. So I'm also down. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Sure. I'm glad you knew exactly where I wanted to go. Absolutely. So I think Cammy is going to take some of that spider silk sail and also the giant T-shirt that. <laughs> Havana Tropicana got yep. them, and I'm gonna bring it to Aubergine. Okay, wonderful. That's good. And then, uh, does Umbi want to look through the glasses? Oh yeah, that's fun. I'm, I'm also gonna make some potions, but yeah. I like oh, that you idea. can still you'll do that anyway. You get to do that. In <laughs> that's downtime stuff. Okay. You yeah, have you to get to do that it. anyway in between stuff. Yeah, I think he's a little nervous, but I think he'll. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like when your grandpa gets on TikTok for the first time. Yeah. He's like, well, excuse me? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Well, let's start with Troy because I want him. Let's, let's get Amanda, Amanda being buff. <laughs> Playing in with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Just Troy hammering up two by four into the, <laughs> into the ship. Yep. Troy has tied his tunic around his waist, all kinds of onlookers on the edge of the hole, just watching as they're in the dry dock fixing up the ship. But yeah, no, he's uh, he's going to take direction from Harold and, you know, use uh, the sort of stash of extra supplies. I think they're going to have some in the actual storage area of the ship in case it's out at sea, but probably in our quarters at the hold, have all kinds of, you know, supplies sort of stashed in there in case something like this were to happen. Mm, for sure. I like Harold. <laughs> Harold is still like pulling themselves together after being blown up by one of the cannonballs from yeah. Tessie the Storm's crew. I think so Troy is splashing him to keep him like moisturized. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I love the idea that Harold's like on a beach chair on the side, yeah. just like laying out and convalescing as you're, and all the pirates are like, woo, Troy, woo. <laughs> and I think that Troy, as you're doing this, you don't know what you're doing, man. You just. Nah. Duh. Just vibing, you know, nailing some nails, boarding some boards. You can clearly see daylight through the side of the ship. It's not <laughs> watertight, but Troy's having a great time. He's trying, and that's important. Yeah, chatting with Harold. Yeah. One of the other pirates is like, Troy, you look hot. Get in the water. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Bros, make sure bros hydrate, you know? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you should take off your shirt when you get in the water. That's a good idea. I don't want it to get wet. I only got two shirts. You're the best. You should get more shirts. <laughs> get let no shut up. Get less shirts. <laughs> get rid of all your shirts, Troy. They're not. What if I'm chilly? <laughs> Just wear a jacket and like no shirt underneath. That's hot. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with that. Whosoever said that, that was a good idea. Oh yeah, I'll think about that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Troy, do. Can you get in the water? Can you get in the water? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, exactly. No, Troy will get into the water, grab a little bucket, make sure Harold's moisturized, and then uh, dip into the water to cool down. In my head, this is also like you unfurl your wings. <laughs> it's like glittering in the sun and the, wa and the water and everything. It's a real anime moment. Sure. Yes. Yeah, yes, like there's cher a cherry blossoms behind <laughs> Exactly. Well, because I'll be out in the sun doing all the repairs, I think this is a great time for Troy to, you know, yeah, unfurl his wings, make sure they're uh, they're all washed, you know, inspect them for damage, um, all that good stuff, uh, and then leave them out spread wide to dry as he's uh, reclining in the water. Yeah. As you're splashing around by yourself in the water, uh, you see a little <laughs> bottle starts to bob off on the shore and kind of just like floats right next to you. Oh. Yeah. Troy picks it up. Yeah. <laughs> you look down, Troy. You look in it, and uh, it seems that there's some, some like bobbing black liquid inside of the bottle. With a, and there's a little like uh, there's a little note inside that's bobbing in it. It seems like it's a water. It's like an oil skin paper. Uh, so ah. it's kind of just still like bobbing inside of there. Huh. Uh, yeah. He'll uh, he'll wait over to the shore, sit down, and uncork the bottle. Fish the note out. Oh, yeah, you want to fish the note out? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you unfurl the note, and the note says, get the best out of yourself. Uh, use this magic potion. Smiley face. <laughs> Troy, uh, Cammy, Troy, no. Troy, no. Cammy. Cammy appears from, like, with a little hammer. Like, what's up? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Harold is like, if you're keeping drinks from me, just give it to me. I want it. Give it to me. I need to be hydrated. I need the hyaluronic acid to make my skin nice. 
<laughs> Troy splashes water only onto Harold. And no, then... I see the drink you have in your hand. Give it to me. Nope. Troy keeps one one hand on Harold's allergy body and then hands the bottle over to Cammy and says, Cammy, I know we have not spoken specifically about me drinking unidentified potions, what I found in the <laughs> ocean, but it feels like a thing that if I did it, you would be disappointed and then have that tone in your voice like, Troy, why would you do this? And um, I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Harold tries to hop up and grab it. <laughs> and Harold goes, eh, I'm too weak. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, mystery liquid. <laughs> I'm going to roll Arcana, I guess. Yeah, roll Arcana. Well, that's a 16, and now I have four, so that's a dirty 20. That's a dirty 20. Damn. Hey, what does it smell like when you create second cami? Um, hmm. It smells like dirt at night right after it's rained. For sure, for sure. Just, just a real, a real muddy, a real muddy smell of making. Uh, I don't know, maybe a, a simulacrum that can help you out in a bad situation. Yeah, like super <laughs> earthy and almost floral, but also kind of intense and deep. Yeah, you're getting the same smell from whatever's going on in this bottle. Huh. Well, it smells like shadow stuff. I think you probably can drink it. Uh, I rolled a 15, so Harold <laughs> pushes hey. himself up from their beach chair and grabs it and immediately, and immediately drinks it. Harold! All right. It's supposed to make my skin nice! That's not what it does. Mm. And you see, like, Harold stand straight up, which you've never seen before, because Harold's usually kind of just, like, in a lump, like, mm. of algae, just, like, very wide. Harold's 12 feet tall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Harold, <laughs> Harold is, like, a square four by four feet. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> Harold stand up, stock straight. Their eyes go black. And then you see that, like, I don't know if you've ever picked up some, like, moss that's growing on the side of a rock before, like, if you're hiking in the in the forest. When you pick it up, there's, like, dirt underneath. There's, like, a little bit of loam something that they're using to, like, attach itself. Botanists out there, you know what I'm talking about. But you, you all kind of understand what I'm saying, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that you see, like, almost the dirt or this, this like, backing that's on Harold come forward. Like, slowly moving a transparency forward on, like, Photoshop or something. Yeah. You're moving it forward. Like, more depth surfacing to Yeah, the like, surface. the depth is moving forward. And then he, like, pushes out through Harold. And then there's two Heralds. One that's green and one that's brown. And they both collapse into a heap. Harold! And Troy's going to, like, with wet arms, try to, like, scoop up both of them. Did we need more than one Harold? He was already so much already. Hmm. Green Harold goes, thank you, Troy. This is all I've ever wanted. Is to be in your your arms. If you're going to ask for mouth to mouth again, we've talked about why that's not helpful for you. I'm choking. Help me. (laughs) No. No. (laughs) And then the brown Harold goes... I'm coming to life. Someone breathe mouth air into me. Okay. Breathe into your mouth. Troy gives a little kiss to the forehead of the brown Harold. <laughs> hey, uh, this Harold is like brown and silty and like almost like mud and dirt is coming together. And, so, and the Harold is like, oh, it looks like there's a, there's a hole in the ship. I think I could just patch this thing. I could just patch this thing up. Thank you. That would be super helpful. Do you uh, want another kiss? Uh, yes, pl- yes, please. <laughs> Try kiss him on his cheek. <laughs> Thank you. And then the silty Harold kind of like bounds over to the ship and then starts pulling it together, like slaps himself on the side of the ship and then starts to pull the whole thing together. Like a, like almost clamps that start to kind of molds it into another face. Is like, all right, Troy, I just need you to... to to hammer some of the hammer some of the wood in there, and we'll we'll get it a little damp so that it, it has a nice curve, and then we'll make this thing looking nice. Love it. And Troy bounds over to uh, lift up some more boards, and I- I'm picturing Troy almost like imagine if you're trying to sort of put the lid on a shoebox, and Troy just like plops it down diagonally, and then the lid like writes itself and slots in properly. Um, <laughs> that's what the the new Herald is like fitting each board so that it ends up being watertight. That's also a great question. I think Cammy's going to be like. Are you also Harold, or would you like a new name? Oh, that's a good question. I hadn't thought about that. Harold, would it be weird if we had the same name? Absolutely! Pick another one! It's mine! 
I have a suggestion. Please. How about Siltvio? Like Silvio, but Silt. That's. <laughs> and we can call you Sil. 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 I like it. I'm okay. Sil, and that's Harold, and we're and we're different, and we're not the same person. Yay! Incredible. So now, bing, bang, boom, you have a new crew member. This Whee! is Sil! Yay! Yay! Shipwright, who can help Who can help to uh, patch holes in the ship if you have one damage, kind of hold it together so you don't have any problems. And also, they kind of will do that while Harold is, is kind of running the ship. Sil will be doing repairs and stuff uh, on the fly. Hell yeah. Is this a time where I might be able to use an Arcana check, or should I just do that later on, on this color of magic that's happening? Sure. What do you think? Well, yeah, give me a check. I like the idea that Umbi shows up and we're like, we have a new crew member. And Umbi's like, I have some questions. <laughs> I think he's seeing this from afar, and he's like, what the fuck? Am I going to step on this boat with this new thing? I can't believe this voice is less taxing than Les's. It really is. I don't know why. Uh, well, see, what happened is I rolled the dice, and then it went to the edge of my, like, dice bag, and then rolled back, and landed on that one. Mm. So. Yes. Brand, <laughs> you say you have good dice. Why don't you use them? No, you say that, Julia. <laughs> well, no, I say, Brandon, are those your good dice? And then you say no. Yeah, but I don't ever change dice. They're just, there's, I just have two D20s here. <laughs> hey, Ambi, what do you think happened here? Oh boy, I think um, I think Umbi doesn't understand the botany, the biology of algae, and he's just like, "Oh, this must be the natural life cycle of algae." I love that. Mm, yeah, it's yeah. just like, "Oh, uh, algae, obviously." Oh, does um, what do you call it when you just like create a pod of yourself coming off of your head? Um, mitosis. Yeah, but it's just mitosis. <laughs> Umbi's like, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> <laughs> maybe your father and son, or maybe your twins. I don't know. <laughs> Who can say? Who can say? Yeah. Well, they're a member of the crew now. I'm Sil. Who are you? I'm Umbi. What up? Nothing. Your your ship looks like garbage. That was intentional, I know. Oh, so I should do a bad job. I mean, like, make it look like it was, you know? If you don't mind. Good. This is our thing here on the Sea Whip. Good on the inside, bad on the outside. Yeah, that. Structurally sound, but aesthetically displeasing. Yeah. Like a pirate. Yeah. Like me when I wake up in the morning. I get that. That's okay. I got it. <laughs> Troy looks between them like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. So are they like, hey, hey, Troy, get me. What up? Did they like kiss or are they like? friends or are they like family i kissed them what a weird question to ask first whether or not they kiss <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> do i yeah are they okay. like are they did they like meet each other right like you and raz no right. um, no still still just kind of came out of harold so it was it was kind of like a you know like a a, a budding a twin thing situation yeah Cool, 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 cool. But then um, I, th I think the reason why I think he is just like Harold is he also pretended to choke, so I would give him mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. Um, so I gave him a little oh, yeah. kiss on the forehead, but then he started, uh, and then he needed another kiss on each cheek. So it's been three kisses for Syl, and then I'm going to give Harold three later so he doesn't feel jealous. You know, you don't have to indulge that, right, Troy? Huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you've never had siblings before. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. That was an only umby. <laughs> That's not Don't true. Don't you famously like have siblings? siblings? Yeah, I know. Yeah. He has many siblings. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say only umby. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like you had one child you loved more than the others. <laughs> <laughs> and later, Troy will give Harold uh, three kisses on the forehead before uh, he goes to sleep. Oh, nice. Incredible. Nice. All right. Cammy goes back to Aubergine's fashion house of fashion. Yay. Cammy walks in and goes, Aubergine, my greatest and oldest friend, how are you? Oh, mademoiselle, Tivich, it is so nice to see you after so long. I know, <laughs> it's been so long. I think like three whole days. I cannot, <laughs> I sometimes I just stay inside here. I do not know what this day or what this night. 
I have That's heard true, thir- and the I'm- clock's all fucked, so. <laughs> <laughs> I look at the clock and I say, life is nothing but broken clock. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a movie. <laughs> Like a sad black and white movie. Oh, oh you you yeah, you missed all of the new wave puppet shows that happened. Mm. They're all in black and white now? They're all in black and white. I don't know where they found so many black socks. <laughs> of course, Aubergine is a director at the Puppet Playhouse. Why didn't yes. we think of that before? Of course. That's his downtime activity. Death in Venice, which is one of the islands in the Great Salt Sea. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been there, but it sounds lovely. There's a lot of uh, peaches. It is uh, relevant to the plot. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have uh, any materials for me that I can use to make a wonderful new... Maybe still the outfit for such a dusting tea witch as yourself. I have brought you some amazing materials to work with. First off, this incredible piece edits the giant t-shirt. <laughs> what does it say? Why does it say my husband brought me to book depository and only thing keeping me from divorce? <laughs> I don't know, but it feels like it has a story behind it, which is why I'm so invested in it. It does. It is a uh, time-space relationship. I'm not one of those book depository adults. I do not get it. What does it say? <laughs> I would murder my wife for the insurance money. <laughs> <laughs> if my husband did not take me here, I would turn this into two crime podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I did enjoy myself as a full-ass adult at the book depository, so... I just do not get it. I spend my time watching Black and White Puppet Show. It is a different thing. Understandable. Oh, my God. Did Cammy get a bunch of bookie bars? No. Oh, no. no. Did you see one of those secret bookies? <laughs> I saw the oldie times one. Oh, that is rare, I hear. Yeah. The hidden bookies, the hidden mm, bookies. Oh, yeah, the hidden bookies were all over the place. God, I love it. I love the idea. It's just like a square. <laughs> Sombrero Donald Duck. Yeah. And you know what? We got the specialty researcher's delight too. The one with the little rose head bear thing. Oh, I yeah, I have heard about that. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is, I mean, depressing. This is depressing. I cannot do anything with this. I'm sorry. Do you have anything oh, else? Oh, okay. Well. I did also pull this off of a ship. I don't know if it's going to be any use to you. And she takes out the spider silk. Oh, interesting. Oh, I thought you were going to be much more excited about the t-shirt. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. That was... You know, this is interesting. It's just... Utilitarian. Uh, this is utilitarian. Great professional. I do not. I haven't seen anything like this since before Cascade. And it is quite interesting. You can remember from when the Cascade? I thought you don't remember anything of your past life. Oh, no, not my. I, mean, see, I have studied that. Uh, my understanding from all of this experience I have, I must have studied the, the best fashion houses in the entire, in the entire Verdestello, uh, in various things in all the different, co- in various places, various countries. It is, uh, you are both, uh, artist and historian at the same mm. time as it expresses itself. For example, this t-shirt, it expresses death of society, but this... <laughs> What? <laughs> Aubergine takes out gla- once again glasses with like it's a monocle with like 20 magnifying glasses on it that wow. just like flips on nice. like oh the material this this must have been made by uh, spy- spider bug bulk- folk where did you get it oh I took it off a ship that was trying to attack us and the ship belonged to Tessie the Storm so she was a spider folk. Oh, uh, another reason why I do not go to book depository. Incredible. Mm. I've I've never seen someone come back. I, I think I can make something of this. What kind what? of piece? You've never you... seen someone come back? <laughs> <laughs> I have then no, I've never seen anyone tussle tessel with the storm and come back. I like that tessel, because it's Tessie. It's yes, you see, it's one the portmanteau to combining two words. Mm-hmm. It's from <laughs> where it's it's the word portmanteau actually is where it means is something. Is it portmanteau? Front. No, it means... Hand it's, luggage. Yeah. It means when you get pulled under the waves and you cannot come out. It's because uh, <laughs> oh. you're a port You're a port under the toe. Oh. Yeah. You fall, a man falls off the port and is under toe. Yes, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's towed yeah. under the port. Yes, I understand completely. What kind of piece are you looking for here? What about a beautiful cloak? Hat. 
hat. <laughs> oh. I I have a hat. Oh, I. Do you just... want me to have a nicer hat? Well, I can improve hat. I thought we were going to say same thing at the same time. <laughs> 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 so I, I really like the idea that oh we're gonna say the same thing at the same time but i also really like the but no that happened it's there. like oh i, I thought we were on the same pitch uh, i just i guess so you know i'm always making cloaks for various pirates here in the hold but you're the only one with heads heads uh, i've never get i never get to work on headwear Famously, I am the only one with a hat here, canonically. Oh, well, you know, tricolor don't count. It's doesn't a dime count. a dozen. You can, you know, a barrel washes up on shore and the tricolor, tricolor hat. Trey goes, barrels? <laughs> it takes a real, you know, it takes a real green folk to rock a cool hat like mine. However, I did want an item that would stop me from being stabbed as easily. Uh, and you can. And hats typically. Don't stop you from being stabbed very easily. You should uh, stick your head down. Mm. For, form. Uh, function over form, death of the fashion. Okay, I'll see what that is. <laughs> All right. And then I just like, like in, fr- in front of you, Aubergine like has a grumpy face on. Oh, <laughs> it just no. like throws together a cloak in like two minutes. All right, cloak, protect you from being stabbed. Julia, he's French. He's always going to be surly. It's fine. Okay. Th- thank you. Aubergine, if I bring you back another fantastic piece of fabric, I will make sure that you can make a hat next time. Out. Maybe I'll make it for someone else who likes hats. No! <laughs> I don't know. Troy would look nice with hat. I'm be little, like, little hat, so it, it makes him look uh, like fun old man. But, but I want to be <laughs> the only one with a hat. Uh, this, it's just how uh, the fashion goes. Such is life. I'm sad now. Now you have plus one AC. Get the the mic sights. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! Now my AC is 11. 11? Jesus Christ, Julia. I'm not very dexterous. Hey, Eric, your French accent was fucking great. Yeah, it Very was. good. Uh, here for DMs out there, uh, don't try it earlier. Just see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Just wing it. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. You stay ready so you don't have to get ready. All right. Umbis is going to look at some stuff. Yay. All right, folks. Let's, uh, yeah, all of you can be in the scene together. This just, uh, I mean, he has to wear glasses. Well, he also needs to wear gl- the, the glasses. Mm. He needs to wear glasses and the glasses. His readers right. plus the right, new right, glasses. Right, yeah. You yeah. got the double glasses situation. Yeah, maybe Ambi has right. a little hat to make him super jaunty. I don't know. I'm just spitballing. <laughs> Not yet. No, I don't know. All right, yeah. If he wants that, he can spend time with Aubergine and get <laughs> fucking roasted. Can you imagine... Um, be getting into a conversational tete-a-tete with a Frenchman. <laughs> bad. It would end bad. Bad. comedic potential. I didn't think anything would be funnier than Umbi talking to himself, but we might just need it to do it. If, if we had more time, we might just need to spend some time doing it. Bonus episode, 30 minutes, Aubergine, Umbi. It's like fucking my dinner and on with Andre. Yes. <laughs> Enemies to lover situation. Ooh, yeah. all right, all right. Amanda, write it for us. 30K words, enemies to lovers. Slow burn. Slowest burn. <laughs> Slowest burn. They both work at the post office in this situation. They don't even touch hands until 80,000 words in. Wow. Umbergine. Um, Umbergine, Ooh, absolutely. It, it kind of works. So, yeah, I think, uh, what are we looking at specifically here? Would you say that there's anything in the journal and any entry in the journal of uh, Fun Manny Potash that would be, like, more relevant or more close in time than this note? Because, like, the mystery of, like, why she was in the hold and, like, what their next journey off the dock is enticing but if there's anything more relevant in the journal, I want to do that. Hey, that's a good question. I think that all of you can look at this and we'll decide if you want to roll for anything. But I think that like the three of you are like reviewing what happened. You're looking over your stuff and you finally open up the journal from Fun Mandy Potash. And you see like the first, so there's one entry in the front that's like, Dear Diary, I'm Fun Mandy Potash. And this is where I'm going to put all my thoughts and things about my time here on the ship. Here's one thing that I did. Crimson didn't like it when I slit when I opened up the container of salt. Uh, but I did it anyway. <laughs> That's a good prank. I love it. But I did it anyway. I don't have a lot of time for me to write in my journal, uh, but I will try my best to do so. 
Can you fall in love with a book? <laughs> so then yes. as you look through, you look... <laughs> As, as you continue to look through, the handwriting gets messier and messier and messier. The first entry is the only one you can read. Every word, you're like, what does this say? Is this I get it. Her eyesight must have been failing. Yeah. <laughs> of course, yeah, for sure. Or just like, you know, she was writing too quickly. Some of the pages are water stained. There's blood in vari on various ones of them, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that the only entry you can see you can read traditionally is this first one setting the scene that this is in fact a journal establishing all this stuff. This is not to say you can't hop in. Mm -hmm. However, that's all you can glean from reading it in this way. Yeah. Yeah, probably similarly to how when I jumped into the news article, it, we had kind of mumbled parts where it had faded. So I think it'll still give us a lot of information if we jump in, even if we don't get the entire picture. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. Excellent. What do you think, Amanda? Yeah, I concur. I think you can read whatever you feel like. My only thought is that maybe the last journal entry gives us some context as to where they were and what happened when they died or lost the journal. And that yeah. could be really interesting. Absolutely. Yeah, that was kind of my thought, too. It's just like hopping into the last page. Yeah. Should we just try that? Yeah, let's do it. I'm down. Your action. So I, I think it's your call, but I'm, I'm down with that. Okay. Um, he's going to turn to the four of his crewmates now. Five. Oh, yeah. Six Havana, total. Sil, wow. We've, like, doubled our crew. Yeah. Almost. Um, turn to his five crewmates and say, I'm not sure about this, but there comes a point in every old green folk's life when they need to experience what the youth are doing. And that's reading. Yeah. That is true. Uh, do you want some pointers from Troy and I? Because we've both done this before. Yeah, please. Troy? Am I going to get, like, motion sick? Uh, no. So you're going to fall in there. You're going to say to yourself, this is not how anybody described reading. And if they did, I would have read a lot sooner. Um, but <laughs> just remember, you can always um, take off the glasses and uh, and then you'll, you'll be back. So, like, when you're in there, it is going to be like you don't have any glasses on. But when you put up your, your hands to your face like this and then Troy presses his hands against his eyes and then goes, oh, I can't see. And then puts them on the side of his head. <laughs> um, you can take off the glasses and then that will get you out of there. Thank you, Troy. That was very instructive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my suggestion is, you know, the existential fear of being known and knowing where you belong in the universe and, you know, your place there and where you come from? Mm, not exactly. I'm pretty confident. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I was going to say that it's like that and you just have to embrace it. So, I love it. I was okay. Just, hey, Cammy, I was just joking with you, of course. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Sometimes I don't I don't get the joke myself. I just say it, you know. Mm -hmm. Troy's doing a bicep curl with like a log. He doesn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like a like a mast pole. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. And Umbi puts on the glasses, and a la Remy Rainbow, or I guess uh, Blues Clues. Blues Clues? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. In all of my notes, I've been writing Blue Skidoo, so yes. <laughs> Great. Umbi Blue Skidoo's into this book. For sure, yeah. You put on the glasses, everything looks incredibly blurry except for the book. So you're jumping into the journal? Yeah, the last page. I assume I'll probably get like sort of an impressionist painting of a thing, but we'll find out. Oh, you're jumping into the last page? Mm-hmm. Yeah, with writing on it, of course. Oh, okay, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yes, you look down and you look see just like these these like doctor's prescription handwriting down uh, on the last entry of the oh, journal. Oh, so she was a woman. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, as you as you jump in, you feel like the ground kind of go out from below you, and then immediately you fall on your hands and knees and slam into a small bedroom on a ship. Oh, my hip! Mm. For those of you who've been on a cruise before, I think that this could be something like a small bedroom there is like they try to make it as bedroomy as possible. But you're, you're like, oh, I'm looking down and it's the wood of a hull of a ship. <laughs> and it sure is swelling everywhere. 
Is it like an interior cabin? Yes, it's an interior okay. cabin, correct. Like a full-size bed in the corner with like some incredibly ornate bedspread on it and like 20 pillows. Uh, you can see that there's like a cabinet with like all these jewels overflowing on it. And then the way that people throw their clothing on the floor. Fun Mandy Potash has just thrown their treasure. And you also see there's a little desk uh, and a chair where you are looking over and you see that there is a sack of white pearl onions that Ooh. are uh, is kind of leaned over. My favorite snack! <laughs> uh, with a, with a tri-corner hat. Oh no, it's a person. <laughs> <laughs> with a tri-corner hat cocked over to the side. A like sho- jauntily. Yeah, jauntily like- cocked to the side. A shock of red hair. A cutlass at each one of her sides and some incredibly dark black velvet boots as you hear, Dear Diary, Crimson doesn't want me writing in this anymore because therefore it could be used as evidence if the world government comes and gets me. But I think I'm just cataloging all the things. Good thing uh, my handwriting has gotten terrible so no one can read this other than me. (laughs) As you're hearing this, you are also looking around, and yes, everything is a little smoosh like an impressionist painting. Even on your hands and knees, it is hard for you to hold any sort of like balance, not only because the you are on a ship that is seems to be speeding forward, slamming against the surf uh, as it's charging, but bad uh, handwriting certainly doesn't help. I'm going to work on my best prank yet, but I'm only going to do that after we find the second key. Kisses, diary. Love, fun Mandy Potash. It me. Oh, they found the first key. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So they know where the first key is. This is interesting. Um, But you can talk to them. Oh, yeah. You can interact with them. I learned that from when I did mine. Oh, that's true. I forgot about that. Um, Umby's going to stand up as best he can and announce himself in the room. Hello, I am Sir Umbus of Crimson Crew the Second. I have come to what? <laughs> retrieve the key because uh, we need it. Can I, where'd you get it? Can I have it? This is a great lie, Brandon. Just want to say, Umby, great at lying. Mandy uh, spins around and uh, turns around to you and says, I think I know everyone on the ship in my own ship, especially in my own diary entry, and you don't seem like anyone I've seen or pranked, which is how I remember people. So uh, you're going to have to explain to me who you are and what you're doing here. Cabin cleaning crew, where's the where's the key? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brandon. I don't, listen, I don't keep the key on me. Well, I I have if you could see anything about my whole my myself or this entire situation, no one thinks I have responsibility. I like that she's John Ralphio from Parks. Yeah, Park. dude. <laughs> yeah, so about it. That's fine. How did you find the key? Is what I'm actually after. You know. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Which well, one no, you... that wouldn't make sense because they would have it. This did happen. He says out loud. <laughs> so. Where did you die and leave the key, I guess, is the question. Well, <laughs> I didn't die. I'm going to live forever. Everyone knows that. <laughs> That's the whole point of being a pirate, especially joining up with Crimson. Well, what's the point of being on Crimson Larceny's crew if you're not going to live forever? Where do you keep the key? Oh, in the, yeah, in the hold, locked under uh, lock and key, which is pretty funny when you think about it. <laughs> the hold, like the uh, volcano thing that's hollow, that one? Mm. Or do you have a different hold? Oh hold no! Like on be... the ship, you call it the hold. I call it the I call it uh, the hot springs where I get to work out all of the problems I have on my back. Well, that's what I was gonna ask because like the hold can be a generic term for a thing like a hold, yeah. But you mean like the hold on the boat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's in the thing with, over there. You know, they, as, as she's gesturing like with her chin. It's like yeah, over there. Yeah, in the place over there. Cool. Are there any immediate dangers that are about to befall this ship that you understand? I don't know. I hope not. Great. Where are we right right now? We're heading towards the Divine Labyrinth, of course. <gasps> the Divine cool. Labyrinth. And how many uh, clicks or nautical miles away do you think you are? <laughs> they don't trust me with that. I'm sorry. I wish I could You're have... You're the second mate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my, my responsibility is to fun. I don't know. <laughs> some number of clicks. Less than 10. 
Great. Thank you for not questioning why there's an old man in your room suddenly. <laughs> hey, we're in your we're in your reading thing. I like your glasses. They're neat. Thank you. I wish I <laughs> I wish I had time to read, but I was too busy doing pranks. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, the one prank you did where you where you hit a treasure inside of a hollowed out volcano. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, I got you. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Oh no, I don't fuck you, my I good don't sir. Fuck you. I don't fuck you. <laughs> I think I'm gonna take off the glasses now. <laughs> great. Good job, Brandon. That was great. Do we see what Umby's saying as he's interacting? <laughs> yeah, do we hear all of the words that he's saying? No, 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 like, no. Why does he keep telling her fuck you? No, I guess that's a good question. I don't know what what it looks like when they're gone. I, I think, think it's, it's in the mental space, probably. Probably just yeah, eyes blank. Yeah. Kind of. I like the idea that like maybe you're in there and now you're just like an out. There's just like an outline of you, like someone sketched Umby. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it's like cool. if this was a cartoon, we like moved back three stages of design, mm. and it's just like a sketch of Umby standing there because the three, the two of you haven't done this around anyone else so i think this might be the first time seeing it yeah that was pretty dope i love that cool as i'm like being sucked out of the book does the ship like hit a rock and take on water or something i think fun mandy Pochash punches you in the face <laughs> and knocks your glass and knocks your glasses off she just throws one of her onions at me yeah. <laughs> hey you're gonna be nicer to me about my pranks or i'll show you vidalia in spanish <laughs> <laughs> That is incredible. I love it. We got to ask around about the Divine Labyrinth now. Uh, I relay all that information to my crewmates. Well, I guess it's, you know, close to the Labyrinth, so that should probably be our next destination, I guess. Yeah, maybe we can, when we go to the puppet show tonight, we can ask the rest of the pirates if anyone's heard of the Divine Labyrinth or where that might be. Love it. Yeah. Maybe we should, like, keep it chill, though, you know, so they don't go there first somehow. Yeah. You know. Or we ask him and kill him, whatever. Yeah, or, People tend to listen know. to me if I talk to them when my shirt is off and then not remember what they said later, so that, I can try that. That's a Troy, great idea, Troy. That's a fucking great idea. We'd love that for you. Really yeah. embracing your, your energy that you bring to the team. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I think as you, as all of you are going out to the puppet show, and um, Syl is very confused why you get all of your news via puppet show. Mm -hmm. It's the best way to do it. But why? But, but why puppets? I don't get it. Because they're easy to make and they express all of the emotions of a green folk. It's high art. Yeah, especially when it's in black and white, like Aubergine directs. Oh, is he direct? <laughs> oh, is he? Is this one of Aubergine's one again? I hate French films. No, I think this is the Daily News one. <laughs> oh, we'll come up with John Stewart, who I assume is a <laughs> bowl of vegetable stew. We'll come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we haven't met anyone who's like a cooked who's crush. Been cooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was trying to think. I was trying to think about that. As you're walking up, you see Arello bounding up to you, wearing like a mailman uniform. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> and like a jaunty hat with a big feather and be like, sorry, I haven't gotten the chance to give you your mail yet. You've been gone for so long. How how is the how is Book Depository Island? I I would say better than Eska, where we weren't immediately tried to be killed. But pretty quickly. Not, yeah, uh, not terrible. All things considered, Arello, could have been worse. I got this dope T-shirt. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold it up to the light. I can't see. And he there takes out like opera glasses and puts it in front <laughs> of his face. It's like, why does it say my entire marriage's bedrock is on annual trips to the Big Depository Island on this shirt? Cause that's my marriage. Ba -ba -ba. Ya -da 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 -da. Ya -da -da. Tip hat. <laughs> Cammy leans over to Troy and said, I told you they were married. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad I don't have to deal with straight people problems. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> straight fruit. Straight fruit. Yeah, straight fruit problems. Um, well, I, ha I have all of your mail. We get mail? Well, when you have mail, then you get mail. What? Oh. Why have I never gotten mail? I don't have time to unlock the tragic backstory. I'll do it another time. <laughs> All right, I do have one for Troy Riptide. Whoa. For me? Who is it from, Troy? Who's it from? <laughs> Arella, Arella grabs the envelope back and says, Troy Riptide, I'm not good <laughs> at... I don't know if you could tell, but I don't have... I'm not detail-oriented. Thank you. <laughs> and Troy grabs the letter and is like, it's like... 
listen, I know, I know I make a lot of jo jokes about books, but like when you think about it, this is like one page of like the, the book of my life. And it's like, it's here. It's like right here sent to me with my name on it. It's like a personalized true. book. Do you guys mind if I like take like a personal moment and like go like sit over there and like read, read my first letter? No, do it. Yeah. Oh, I thought I was going to get a preview before the puppet show. Fine. As Arella <laughs> stomps off. What's the point of being the mailman if you don't hear about mail? It's illegal to open it. Come on. <laughs> Fuck. Classic Arello. And yeah, I think Troy's going to um, like hold the letter really close to his chest and go to like, I'm picturing sort of like an outdoor amphitheater and he's going to sort of like sit in the back corner and open the letter. I'm being Cammy, just like have a conversation while you're gone. <laughs> Talking about Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, did you like Mandalorian season two? I thought it was really good. <laughs> I love the baby. Papa, Papa Lorian, Pup, Puppet Lorian, <laughs> season two. I love that little green. I love that little green sock that they use for the puppet. I was just thinking that it was funny that Amanda picked an auditorium because I just pictured a shitty piece of shit peanuts stage with like seven logs in front of it. I also <laughs> thought that, and I think that that's we're all talking about the same thing. Yes, <laughs> it's like a Ren Fair stage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, he's in. He's he's on the the backmost log. <laughs> For sure. All right, Troy, you want to pop it open? Yeah. All right. You open it up, and it is an invitation. Troy Riptide, for your acts upon the Great Salt Sea, you are cordially invited to the Bullseye Games, <gasps> held in three days' time. Ooh. Bring your shooting weapon and bring your crew. There's prizes to win. Guys, we're going shooting. 